The topic of today's presentation is digitalization in the oil and gas business. When talking about digitalization, we are always talking about data or information which are available in time and to the necessary extent. This information will be the base for our decisions, whether to survive on the market or to prevent any safety or security events. But without data, you are just another person with an opinion, no more, no less. To make the right decisions, all information must meet several different requirements. All data should satisfy the minimum requirements in regards to confidentiality, integrity, availability, authenticity, accountability, liability, and reliability at any time. Please do not forget these crucial requirements in any of your digitalization project. If you can't rely on your data, you will simply use your decision base. Now, what is digitalization? Many definitions of the term digitalization or Industry 4.0 in the business environment like this one by Gartner are focusing on the digital business itself. But we have to note that the possibility to develop new revenues or value-producing opportunities in the midstream area, especially for long-distance pipeline transmission systems, are limited. We don't want to conceal that there are indeed some interesting approaches in the area of distribution networks and network segments closer to numerous customers or by using a dark fiber of existing optical cables along the pipeline. But for this presentation, we should concentrate more on other aspects of the digitalization. We should focus on the optimization of internal business processes, creating a reliable information base for essential business decisions, and securing the base for the necessary digital transformation. Beside this quite general idea about data or the definition of a term, There are further very practical reasons for which a digitalization of internal processes will be required. At the first, I would like to mention the digital transformation. Manufacturers of operating technology products have moved away from pure and simple hardware products. More and more functionality is implemented in software, and gradually it will be only available if the devices are interconnected. On the one hand, the implementation of features in the software could lead to a shorter innovation cycle and to a higher degree of flexibility. On the other hand, this could also lead to a number of new challenges for the operators, like the need for cont continuous training, the constant patching and new dependencies on manufacturers' new services. In particular, it must be assumed that the life cycle of the products will decrease, the interval for the revamp of the control system will become shorter and shorter. A second issue is the increased requirement to the information security management system, especially in regard to cybersecurity. While in the past availability was considered as the most important characteristic of a control system, today also the integrity of hardware, firmware, software, device configuration or data communication have to be considered as a further precondition for a proper functioning of the control and safety system. The integrity of the system is today the base for a trustworthy cooperation with suppliers, partners, service providers and customers along the entire value chain. As next, we have the communication. Technologies like interconnected devices, autonomous vehicles, will also lead to an increase in machine-to-machine -machine communication, bypassing traditional hierarchies. As a consequence, the relevant work process needs to be adapted and the responsibilities may need to be rearranged. The fourth item are the altered conditions. The climate change forces our society to act. Renewable energies and consequently a changing mix of energy sources, energy storage, green industry, advanced oil and gas explorations and recovery technologies will have an impact on the demand and supply of oil and gas. As next, we have the rapid developments in different technologies, especially the unstoppable increase of computing power, combined with the capability to collect and to store a huge amount of data and of course the use of advanced algorithms could be the base for further interesting digitalization projects. 
not to mention the latest developments in machine learning, which are quite interesting for the maintenance teams of a pump or compressor station. The use of so-called digital twins, the virtual or augmented reality technologies, provide the basis for redesigning and enhancing of workflows at site. Robotics could also change the way of working in harsh or challenging environment. The last item are the possible new business models. As already mentioned, such aspects only play a subordinate role in this context. After a brief definition of the terms and an overview of various reasons for a digitalization project, we should start now to discuss the technical systems and the internal processes, which could be optimized or changed by such kind of projects. Let's start with the internal processes. A general overview, we call it application landscape, of various and already implemented software packages and applications is already a very useful indicator for the variety and number of requirements that are necessary for the operation of a pipeline system. Different divisions of a company have to work hand in hand. At the same time, the level of digitalization can vary significantly between the several internal processes, areas or the detail of software application could be differently. The harmonization of this application and processes, the development of clear interfaces between the different areas should be seen as the next round of business process optimization. At this point, it should be noted that all this must be linked to an improved and clear defined internal process. There is no point of digitalizing purely designed and inefficient processes. For example, an integration of an work permit system with the access control system and the intrusion detection system could help easily to verify that any works will be performed as scheduled and that the relevant workers are on site. Such a project would require a cooperation across several units and this sometimes leads to a breaking with traditional organizational silos. One more aspect which needs to be considered is the fact that the relevant developments and their implementation concepts are part of the early project phases. Consequently, all project phases have to be included in the analysis. Already in the first project phase, you will lay the foundation for the necessary information, interfaces and digital data. Also software environment for the design phases have to be defined. And only a proper implementation concept will ensure a smooth transition of the project data into the live system. In this context, you will hear more and more about BIM, PIM and the digital twin. After a short excursion into the internal processes, we would like now to approach the topic from the technical point of view. It goes without saying that the digitalization of any kind of project will always base on digital data. It is important to note that in addition to the digital signals, for instance received from sensors of the SCADA system, any required information must be available in the corresponding format. This applies to all documents of the design phase, for the maintenance documents, for the descriptions of the internal processes itself, or also for all certificates or records that are accumulated over the time. It cannot be stated often enough that choice of the right document format and document management system can have a huge impact on the success of a digitalization project. You will need further a reliable communication system with a very transparent information structure. If you can't manage to set up a clear structure for information channels, you can easily lose any control over your important information. And it's not always the quantity of information that is decisive. It's the quality of the information what makes the difference. As already pointed out in the beginning of the presentation, in order to make the right decision, you need the right data and time, and you must be able to rely on them at any time. In order to ensure the interoperability with downstream application, to analyze the data and to visualize the information, standard and open communication protocols and data formats are a must. 
especially in the brownfield environment. The related structure and hardware installation typically do not have the required communication architecture and do not provide a consistent way of integrating field devices into a higher level. The development of this new communication structures and the appropriate implementation could be a quite interesting challenge, as any impact to the running process control and safety system must be prevented at any time. The NAMO open architecture provides a model for the integration of such innovation system into a new and existing plant. This new communication structure, as well the introduction of new technologies, especially in the context of cybersecurity, require an adjustment of the business structures or the reorganization of responsibilities. In most of the cases, projects are successful in which processes from various departments could be linked together. One more aspect which we should be mentioned at this point. Fallback and relevancy concept should cover the entire business process and should be not limited to some standard hardware and software relevancy configurations. With the last slide, I would like to present a possible method how to tackle the challenges of a digitalization project. Following the additional project approaches, considering the requirements of information security, and finally to fulfill the basic principle of a management system means plan, do, check and act, the following approach has been developed. I would also like to point out that an overall digitalization project could be split into several iterative cycles, which is very common, for instance, in the software development. Okay, now let's start with the different steps. The step one includes at least the analysis of the current situation and the identification of potential subprojects. As already explained in the previous slides, the first step is to determine the existing application landscape to get an overview of the internal processes and to identify the degree of digitalization of these processes. Once the targets have been defined and the business drivers have been identified, potential projects to address pain points or for an implementation of new opportunities shall be evaluated. Typical pain points are, for instance, manual or error-prone processes. Missing or inconsistent data preventing for further automation, inefficient defined processes or organization structures. Sometimes also new regulations are to be met. On the other hand, of the spectrum, we have the new opportunities. For example, a plant wide coverage with wireless technology may provide a better detection of loan workers and provisioning of real time data to the field personnel. Step 2. The evaluation of the project ideas. In the second step, the requirements regarding functionality, performance, scalability, interfaces, safety, security or any other requirements are to be compiled. Based on these requirements, the necessary skills, resources, partners and suitable technology shall be identified and the legal aspects are to be evaluated. Step 3 the validation of the project. In this step, a cost-benefit analysis and the risk assessment shall be performed, covering also aspects like increased system complexity, dependency on external partners and services provider, or cybersecurity. Further, the budget and the timeline have to be defined. Step 4. Set up and execution of the project. An interdisciplinary team representing all potential stakeholders and users shall be assigned to the project. Suitable solutions shall be developed and tested in the lab environment. Special attention shall be paid to the O&M processes and procedures, training and documentation. Step 5. Deploy tested solution. Once the measures have successfully passed all tests, the solution can be implemented. However, the project is only completed when the success of the measures can be demonstrated in the analysis as described in step 1. The now closed loop should serve as the base for further improvements of internal processes. This basic idea should become part of the company culture. A mid-term success can only be achieved 
if this principle will become an essential part of the daily life. Thank you for your attention and now I will be glad to answer your questions.